Hello, everyone. So <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about Elascale, tour real-time video object detection using video, uh, using adaptive scaling. So this is a joint work with my colleague Rizal Ding and also my advisor Diana Maklusko. And as, as we have heard from previous talk, that video object detection is one of the key tasks in various emerging applications. For example, autonomous cars, autonomous drones, household robots, all these kind of emerging applications actually require this video object detection capability to do, to do more um, visual like cognition to interact with the world. However, different application has different requirement and towards accuracy and also speed and requirement. <clears throat> so Par R actually introduced one knob for application developers to trade off between accuracy and also speed. And that knob is on the scale of the image, image, input image. So here we show two of the prior art in object detection, trading off accuracy and speed when they downsample the images. As we can see clearly, there's a trade off between accuracy and speed when we uh, resize and the input image. So in this work, what we found, the key observation is that scaling down an image in terms of the resolution might sometimes help for certain images. For example, we show two images here, and this is the scale that we downsample to the common use on 600 in terms of the shorter side resolution, and then we feed it to a pre-trained um, object detector, and this is the result that we get. As you can see, there are many um, false positives in these um, images. And if we downsample these images, we find that the false positives went away. So these two images demonstrate the cases where when we downsample the image, it, it doesn't hurt the accuracy, but in fact, they improve the accuracy and also improve your speed. And why does this kind of effect happen? It is because when you downsample the image, you can reduce some noises toward the image, and then you can further reduce the false positive of the object detector. So the key question of our research in this work is that how do we determine which image to scale by how much? And our solution to this question is by forming this as a regression problem. So I've like broadly talk, go through the motivation of this work and also our key observation. And then I'm going to talk about how we're going to go about addressing this regression problem. And then we will talk about the Eta scale methodology. Then I'll talk about my results. So in terms of regression problem, it, it is uh, really important for us to first determine what's our input and what's our output. Why, why are we really regressing? So what we really want is given an image and determine what is the best scale for this image um, so that it gets better accuracy and also speed. So this is the demonstration of uh, we building our, uh, our regressor module on top of an existing uh, backbone convolutional neural network. So this is a convolutional neural network that uses an object detector. So on top of the backbone convolutional layer, you have the RFCN, which is one object detection algorithm on top of that. So we put our regressor on top of the high-level fe high feature of the convolutional neural networks. And what we want to regress in the end is how much to scale up or down of the current image. And we put our regressor on top of that layer because our FCN head on top of that feature can able to um, generate the bounding boxes of the image. So we hypothesize that they have the, the representation in that layer contain the scale information. And that's why we put our regressor on top of that representation. So now we know uh, how our, our regressor look like. Then the question is, how, what's the data set we're gonna train, we're gonna use to train this regress, um, scale regressor? So to generate the target labels to train these scale regressors, we, we generally follow two steps. First step is we first select a discrete set of scales for, to broadly cover the scale of interest. In our case, we select 600 with the default um, resolution in common object detector, and then we go down because we want to hopefully accelerate the obje object detector. Then the second step is that for each of the image in your training data, you want to pass through across all these discrete scales and determine with some metric which one is a better scale. 
and use that scale as your ground truth so that now you have an input and output pair so that you can train this scale regressor. And one thing we have to determine here is that what is the scale, that, what is the metric that we're gonna use to, to determine which one is a better scale. And uh, an intuitive, intuitive solution is to use the accuracy, which is the mean average precision in object detection. However, we find that mean average precision is too sparse in an image level. So we will end up having multiple scale having the exact same mean average precision so that we cannot actually tell which one is a better scale. A second intuitive idea is that maybe we can use the training laws that we use to train these object detectors to determine which is a better scale. However, we find that current loss function that used to train these object detectors favors extreme scales. To further uh, explain why this happens, let us look at the training laws that people used in training this object detector. So these laws contain, these laws contain two kinds of losses. One is classification loss for the the prediction bounding box, and also the regression loss for the prediction bounding box. And ICE is summing up for all the bounding box that is predicted by the object detectors. And uh, noted that we have a bracket there saying if I is in foreground, meaning if this bounding box in foreground, that's only when we have the regression loss. That means if the bounding box is in, in, in background, then we wouldn't have this regression loss. So that's what we use for, to train an object detector. So how, what determines if this, uh, this uh, um, bounding box is in background or foreground? Let me give you an example. So this is a predictive bounding box, uh, assuming we have a ground truth that locates roughly similar to where it locates. And then to compute whether this is in foreground, we actually determine its intersection over union. So if this metric is larger than some threshold defined in prior, prior art, people use 0 0.5. And then we can say, okay, this bounding box belongs to foreground. So what we observe that is that if you scale the image too small or too large, it is very likely that an, an bounding box will fall into background. When it falls into background, it zeroes out the later uh, regression loss so that we will, we will have a case where we have lower loss for that scale but having uh, worse detection results. So to, to solving this problem, what we propose is we only consider uh, the only we only consider the foreground bounding boxes when we compare the scales. So that's a tiny little trick that we adapt the current current losses that we only can uh, consider the foreground bounding boxes. So let me give you an example on how we used to evaluate this metric. Assuming we have one image, three scales, so that we downsampling in, in, into three scales, and then let us denote the red box as the foreground bounding box. The gray box is the background bounding box. And then for all of them, we're gonna pass them through the object detector so that we get several results. And then we only consider the foreground bounding boxes and the, we first sort them in terms of the loss and then we only consider the foreground, which is our top uh, tools that, uh, for all the, all the scales. And then, then we can compare across scales of, in terms of which one is better. Now that we have a method to determine which scale is better, that means we are, we are, we are now equipped with a data set that has an input and output that, that used to be to train our scale regressor as here. So now we can train this scale regressor. Um, yeah, we train this scale regressor with mean square loss, by the way. So now we know how, how we can generate this label and train this scale regressor. Let me just go through briefly about what is ETA scale methodology. So our methodology consists of two parts. One is training and one is testing. In training, we first fine tune an existing uh, object detector with multi-scale training so that it doesn't overfit to a single scale. Later, we use the, the train object detector to generate the label that I just mentioned. So now we have a, a, a lot of scale labels. With that, we use the training pairs to train our scale regressor by freezing the backbone um, CNNs, so that we are only training the scale regressors. So after that, now we are equipped with the scale regressors to know to determine the better scale for a current input image. In testing, we get a, 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 a sequence of frames in video object detection. So we use the, as is shown here, we use the frame in, in timestamp T, and then it will first go through the scaling um, module, which will scale it to a certain size. In common object detection, it is scaled to the shortest size 600, but in here, we actually have a parameterized way to scale that. So after we scale that, 
will go through the backbone CNN as usual, and then go through the object detector to produce unbounded boxes for, sign, for, for time stamp T. And on, on the other hand, we also go through the scale regressor to generate what's a better scale for that current image. But then we're going to use this scale for the next in, uh, incoming frame so that we are actually employing this temporal consistency assumption here that this frame might be really similar to the next frame so that the scale, they might, so they, their scale might share. So with that, now we, 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 are know, we all know how this um, ETA scale methodology works. Let me dive into a little bit about our results. So the very first result that we're gonna show is um, on the ImageNet video data set. Here we plot several prior art in terms of video object detection. So on the right hand side, we have the state of the art um, deep feature flow, which is the fastest um, video object detection. And also the blue one is our, our um, baseline video, ob our baseline object detector, our FCN, and also some other uh, video object detection methods. With them, we can actually augment them with uh, ETA scale methodology so that we can push the Pareto frontier a little bit further in terms of both accuracy and speed. I'm going to zoom in into the baseline blue ones, the object detector and also the object detector with ETA scale methodology a little bit to further discuss our, our work. So here we have, we denote SS slash SS, a single scale training, meaning training the object detector, single scale testing. That is the baseline people use. And then multi-scale training, single-scale testing, just because we do multi-scale training, we want to understand how they contribute to the results. Later, our, our methodology, which is multi-scale training, at a scale testing. So we show the result across the different cat categories on ImageNet video data set. First of all, we, can, we highlight several categories that have more than 1% average, mean average precision improvement. So they are in the blue ones. Maybe it's hard, okay, it's good. So they are in the blue one. As we can see, there are a lot of them that get improved by more than 1% of mean average precision by this ADA scale methodology. But also we, of, we also observed that there are several of them actually got worse. So we highlight the worst, the one that got worse in red. So there are three of them actually got worse when it, when it is equipped with ADA scale methodology. And we are really curious like why that happens. And then we zoom in to see that actually we can find that when those category being trained with multi-scale training, its accuracy will drop by a lot. And then with ETA scale testing, it gets, it gets a lot back, but it's not as good as the baseline. Up to this point, you might wonder, maybe it's because of the multi-scale training that makes this uh, object detection better, but not ETA scale te testing. So that we, we argue that's not the case. For a lot of the cases, that the, the multi-scale training actually doesn't help in terms of the accuracy. However, ETA scale testing helps the accuracy. So we can see you know, final mean average precision and also for, for several classes. And that's the accuracy improvement part. We also highlight the runtime improvement. So we go from 75 milliseconds down to 47 milliseconds for this baseline um, object detector running on our GPU 1080 time. So, so now up to this point, we know this ETA scale kind of work based on these results. And then we might want be wondering why it works. So as I mentioned earlier, our intuition is that when you downsample the image, you can reduce part of the noises, so you can reduce a lot of false positives. So we look into whether it is really reducing the false positives. So we pick the top 5,000 prediction of the object detection for each, each of the category, and then look at how many of them are actually false positive across different methods. As we can see, the red one, which is multi-scale training and scale testing, has the least number of false positives, which actually confirm our intuition that with this methodology, we can reduce false positives, which further improve mean average precision. Nonetheless, uh, not to mention, we also improve the speed because we downsample. So up to this point, we know that our scale works, and we want to dive in a little bit to, to understand this methodology further. So we do an ablation study on our multi-scale training. So first, we, we do it without multi-scale training because we say multi-scale training make, make this object detector less overfit to the single scale. But so we, in this case, we want to understand how that behaves. As, as we can see here, if we don't do multi-scale training, our accuracy doesn't get improved, but it doesn't get worse. However, we still get speed improvement. In, in the bottom one, we show the regress scale that is outputted by our scale regressor. We can see uh, it is leaning toward the right-hand side of the scale, meaning it thinks the optimal scale is really uh, belong to 600. 
the original scale. And if we have more multi-scale training into the object detector, and then we can gradually see at a scale becomes better. However, we can see single scale training actually become worse. So we can go further and further. That's in the end, we can see a trend that if we do multi-scale training, and the object detector will be less overfitted to some single particular scale, and then that is beneficial for the at a scale testing methodology. And also we can get further improvement in terms of speed as well. And then we can see the regress scales move from really leaning toward the right-hand side gradually toward, toward the middle, meaning the, the range of the optimal scale that is thought by the, the scale regressor to be wider and wider. So here's, now we know about the, how um, at a scale methodology works with uh, different kind of training in terms of multi-scale. Then we want to probe into the dynamics of at a scale methodology. Because as we have seen earlier, the at a scale testing methodology is a feedback loop. So once we scale, the next frame is based on the current frame, and then the next frame based on the, current, the last frame. So it's a feedback loop we want to understand how it works across time. So here we show a video um, with, with several, we, we show several clips. The first one we show is a pretty static um, video with a large cat in it. We can see clearly at first, we, which is 600, the normal um, scale that you adopted in object detector, it quickly goes down to a pretty much smaller scale and stabilize, meaning the regressor learns to downsample the image if the object in the frame is large enough so that it, when it downsample, it doesn't really hurt. On the other hand, if we have a smaller images, smaller objects in the image, the object detector actually, the, the scale regressor learns that we have smaller objects in, in an image, so they downsample, but not too much. So it stays roughly in 400-ish um, size. Lastly, you might ask, what if I have multiple sizes of the object in a current frame? So that's what happened when we find that. So we find a jittering between um, 400 and 200 across time. So you might wonder, so this, this is um, really unstable. However, we know that for all of the frame, we still are able to detect what, what is in there. So lastly, I'm gonna give you a, a bit um, qualitative analysis comparison between the baseline. So the top one is the single scale training, single scale testing, our baseline, and the bottom one is the at a scale testing. As we can see clearly, for some images, it, it reduced false positives. For some images, it even improved true positives. With that, I'm gonna conclude my talk. First, we propose ELA scale, which improves the both speed and accuracy in the video object detection setting, we, instead of trading one for the other. The second thing we achieved is that we demonstrate 1.3 and 2.7 mean average precision improvement on ImageNet video data set, and also we used a mini YouTube bonding box data set, which is in the paper, with 1.6x and 1.8x speed up respectively. Lastly, together with the state-of-the-art video object detection uh, acceleration technique, which is deep feature flow, we can get even further improvement on top of that, which is another 1.25x um, speed up with slightly better mean average precision. So I'm conclude my work, thank you, and I'm open to questions. This paper is open for questions. Please state your name and affiliation. Hi, I'm uh, Paulius from uh, NVIDIA. Uh, I had a quick question. So for the cases where you saw the accuracy improve, um, did you study which object sizes that improved for? Because I'm assuming if you're scaling down, maybe accuracy improved for large objects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great question. So commonly what we see is that if, if there's a huge object in, in the image, yet you can actually come, you can scale down it by really much without hurting the accuracy. But still, we can see, for example, the turtle case, um, it is actually small, but then it is still able to downsample. So I, I think it, it is not just the size of the object within the image, but also maybe the texture and the complication of the image that decides whether you can downsample or not. Thank you. Thanks. One question I had would be, how would you handle the case where you have objects of different scales in the same image? Yeah, so I think that's a really valid and good question. So uh, as we recall that our label generation process is actually data-driven. So we didn't really, um, 
um, constrain our input image to have a single object or, or actually multiple objects. So based on that, we are actually just comparing. Let's say this, this is how many objects we have in this image, and then we were just comparing across different scales and let the data decide whether which one is better. So in, I think even if we have multiple objects in the data set, it's still, it will still help. All right, so let's thank our speaker. Thanks.